Please join me in Gosho for a reading from the collected works of Shinran, Hymns of the Larger Sutra. It is difficult to meet true teachers and difficult for them to instruct. It is difficult to hear the teaching well and more difficult still to accept it. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Good morning. My name is Alex Sakamoto, and I'm honored to be sharing my appreciation of the Dharma today in observance of Scout Sunday. Scout Sunday is a time for scout packs and troops to recognize the contributions of young people and adults who have volunteered or participated in scouting programs across the country. I'm excited to be speaking to all of you today since I grew up participating in the Betsuin's scouting program. Some of my earliest memories include Pinewood Derby races as a Cub Scout, week-long summer camps at Camp Parsons, Camp Fife, and eventually earning my Eagle Scout Award back in 2016. During my time in scouting, the temple had three different programs, Cub Scouts for elementary school age, Boy Scouts for middle school and high school, and then a venture crew for older youth after Boy Scouts, which has since been inactive. To celebrate Scout Sunday today, I was kind of rehearsing this weekend and I tried, I was gonna wear my old scout uniform, but unfortunately that no longer fits. <laughs> so on this occasion of Scout Sunday, I'd like to begin briefly by discussing the history of Boy Scouts of America and the history of Troop 252 here at the Betsuin. Scouting was founded in England by General Robert Baden-Powell in 1908. Originally started as a military scouting program, General Baden-Powell converted his concept of army scouting for men to peace scouting for boys. A few years later, scouting made its way to the United States and the Boy Scouts of America was founded by Chicago publisher William Boyce on February 8, 1910. While there were a few informal troops present in the US before the official founding, it was William Boyce who established the former Boy Scouts, uh, excuse me, established the formal Boy Scouts of America organization. Today, there are approximately 150,000 troops and packs across the United States with 2.2 million active members and over 800,000 volunteers. Ten years after the formation of the Boy Scouts of America, the Fresno Betsuin established their first troop in 1920. The Seattle Betsuin has a very rich history of scouting as well. Founded in 1948, Troop and PAC 252 have remained active in our local community and has seen over 100 scouts receive the Eagle Scout Award. Scout troops are sponsored by religious and community organizations, and a survey from 2010 indicates that there are approximately 27 cub packs and 28 scout troops that are sponsored by Buddhist organizations, mainly from our national organization, the Buddhist Churches of America. The 12th point of the scout law is a scout is reverent. Scouts are reverent toward God. They are faithful in their religious duties. They respect the beliefs of others. While there are many mentions of God that can be seen within the scout oath and law, the scouting organization is non-sectarian and the reference of God is meant to serve as an overarching concept that can apply to many different religious organizations. In our Buddhist tradition, we don't believe in or worship God or a higher power However, scouting organizations still accept Buddhist members such as ourselves. Since Troop 252 is sponsored by the Seattle Betsuin, I never put much thought into the references of God during my scouting time. However, I remember attending local or national overnight camps where there were many different troops from across the country. Most of the time, the majority of these troops were sponsored by Christian organizations. When we would all gather before meals or on a Sunday morning, 
They often asked each troop to take turns leading a group prayer for everyone that was at the camp. Oftentimes, Troop 252 was the only Buddhist troop present, so it was difficult to convey a Buddhist message or prayer that was relevant and meaningful to everyone. Putting our religious differences aside, summer camps were one of the highlights of my time in scouting. I was able to meet so many different people and formed many friendships. I still keep in touch with some people I met from summer camp today and have even run across people from school and work. Regardless of the religious differences, we all came together under the same common theme of furthering our scouting career and learning new skills that would help us for the rest of our lives. Back in September of 2022, I began the Jodo Shinshu Correspondence Course, which is a two-year program that will help me further my understanding and appreciation of the Buddha Dharma. The first few months, we studied the life of Prince Siddhartha Gautama and his path to awakening. The first turning of the wheel of Dharma is an essential part of Buddhism where Shakyamuni Buddha shared the insights of his enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. It was at this time where Shakyamuni Buddha laid out the teachings that we practice today, including the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. When looking at the Eightfold Path, there are many common themes that are similar to the Scout Oath and Law. Today, we gather here to observe Scout Sunday as, as the 12th point of the Scout Law states, a scout is reverent. Scouts are reverent toward God. They are faithful in their religious duties. They respect the beliefs of others. When looking at the last part of the Eightfold Path taught by Shakyamuni Buddha, it focuses on right meditation to concentrate one's mind, excuse me, to concentrate one's will on the Buddha, his life, and his teachings. So by finding these similarities in the Scout Law and the Eightfold Path, it's easier to remain focused on living my life according to both the scouting principles as well as the Buddhist principles. At the first turning of the Wheel of Dharma, Shakyamuni Buddha shared the Four Noble Truths, with the first one being life is suffering or life is a bumpy road. And this is an inescapable part of life for all living beings. I found the first noble truth an important reminder as I went through scouting that not every experience I had was going to be enjoyable. Waking up for early morning community service, camping at North Bend in the pouring rain, these are just a few examples of when I wanted to drop out of scouts. But looking back, I'm glad I didn't give up and I'm also grateful for the many leaders that I had that encouraged me to continue on the scouting journey. In both scouts and Buddhism, we have the opportunity to be surrounded by so many different teachers who guide us. During the early time of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Sangha, or harmonious assembly in Sanskrit, played an important role in the establishment of Buddhism. Shakyamuni Buddha and his disciples relied on the generosity of others for food and other basic necessities. In return, Shakyamuni Buddha and the Sangha shared with them the teachings and path to enlightenment. Today, the Sangha remains an essential part of spreading the Buddha's teachings, and in scouting, it is through act of, acts of service and guidance from our leaders that we are able to celebrate Scout Sunday and see the continued success of Troop 252 and troops across the country. To all the scouts here today, I hope you continue on your scouting journey with an open mind, listening to all the teachers that you may encounter at summer camps, conferences, and troop meetings. In some temples in Japan, ministers and the Sangha recite how to listen to a Dharma message before the Dharma message is given and there are three key points. The first one being, listen as if I am listening to this message for the first time. The second one, 
listen as if this message is for myself alone. And the third one, listen as if this is the last occasion to listen to the Dharma in my life. By following these three steps on how to listen to a Dharma message, this has helped me be a better scout as well as a Dharma student. Sure, it's easy for me to quickly recite the scout oath and law without thinking too much about it, and the same goes for reciting the golden chain, Jusege, or Nembutsu. But by slowing down and mindfully listening, I'm able to appreciate all that scouting and Buddhism has contributed to my life so far. Thank you for allowing me to share my appreciation of the Dharma as well as the scouting program. To conclude my message, please join me in Gosho for a reading from the collected works of Shinnan, Hymns of the Larger Sutra. It is difficult to meet true teachers and difficult for them to instruct. It is difficult to hear the teaching well and more difficult still to accept it. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits. Namo Amidabits.